tình yêu sao rực lửa tình yêu sao lạnh băng tình yêu như địa ngục tình yêu như thiên đàng tình sao như practice humbly sincerely always praise god praise all the masters to protect you from your own enemy that is your ego your ambitious ego your greed for fame and gain oh that's the worst enemy you can have worse than demons worse than ghosts worse than any other bad beings on this planet or anywhere because if they are demons but you are virtuous you are steadfast in your spiritual practice you're pure in your heart you love god you love the masters you love many other masters then no demons can go near you, not to talk about harming you. No ghosts can even go near. They have to stay tens of miles away. But if you are greedy, ambitious, and building your fame and fortune on false pretenses or a wishy-washy kind of fake imagination, then you're doomed. Then the demons will be around you all the time and feeding your ego with all kinds of fantasy and maybe you're flashing some magic power to you so that you think that, oh, you're somebody. No, 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 that's not a Buddha, okay? The Buddha didn't flash magic, didn't use magic even. Unless sometimes he had to, to see some disciples. He flew, yeah, within his own company and no others could see except the devotees who invited him, for example, like that. He didn't do that for show. He learned to that before or some came to him naturally, I told you already, but he didn't do that just so that people would applaud him, say bravo to him, or give him more lunch than he he could even eat. The Buddha did everything correctly, appropriately, at the right time and right moment only. Anything else he did, like appearing in front of the disciples in jail to comfort them, it's like the queen before. She was jailed and she wanted to see the Buddha, she could not, so she prayed to the Buddha. So the Buddha appeared in his light body, manifested body, not the physical one, but it looked exactly like the physical one. And sometimes you can even touch it, also you can shake hands, or the master even embraces you like a real physical body, but it's a manifested body, okay? And the Buddha manifested his body in her jail where nobody could go in, of course. It's a strict jail and no one could come inside there. Buddha stay in there for a long while to teach her the Amitabha Buddha's method to let her meditate and contemplate there on the Amitabha Buddha's land and later she would be reborn there. But she had to be exact. The Buddha told her what the Amitabha Buddha's land looked like all in detail and she had to memorize and remember all that every day and think about all that detail even and recite the name of Amitabha Buddha. It's not just reciting the Buddha's name only. When the Buddha taught her, it was all in detail. And the Buddha says she had to always remember that in her mind. The scenery of the Amitabha Buddha's land, that's how she could be reborn there. So it's not all that easy, really. You can't be all that one-pointed to remember all the details of what the flowers looked like, what the water in that nectar lake looked like in the Amitabha Buddha's land, and how the birds sang there, what kind of tune, what kind of melody, for example. Okay, so that was the Buddha's manifestation body to help a disciple in time of need, but he didn't use his magic or anything. It's just a natural thing that happened because the Buddha has many different kinds of powers to use to help his disciples. and. Mostly only the disciples or the concerned people see it. But sometimes some other outside people see it, like in a family, the mother doesn't see, but the non-initiated child sees the master come to her house and do this and that. <laughs> For example, or even a non-initiated outside a family member or friend came and saw the master in the house doing things or blessing. It can happen also, but it does not uh, always happen like that. Mostly the Buddha only manifested when necessary, or always, even always, but not everybody can see it. Even in my whole assembly, for example, when all the disciples were there, only some disciples would see the Buddhas coming and going, or any other miracles, or the masters 
miracles in that assembly, blessing who and who. But others didn't see anything, didn't realize anything. Only a group of disciples at that time saw it. We have some of those testimonies. A lot of teachers that sometimes they don't write. Normally, I tell them not to, but sometimes they cannot help it. They have to write. They love to share it with others, to encourage others to continue to practice. Yes? I just want to share this day, Wazong 就是享受那个那个境界嘛，然后我就回去之后，我就闭关七天。我当时是只享受那个高兴的事情的，但是闭关七天的时候，我更震撼的事情是，因为师傅高兴唱歌的时候，那个震动的那个力量，就把那很多
去，然后那天他们呢，来的那些喇嘛和全部的人，差不多有四十万到五十万，然后我就被被那一种力量把我那个推到那个法殿里边去。然后很多那个尼尼姑的喇嘛在那边念经，然后我就在那里念五句，念七戒礼物，啊，然后就我就大脑不知道自己在说什么，但是内在的就就跟宇宙沟通，然后一下子师傅师傅就在空中很多佛空中中间师傅站的。很高很高的一个很庄严的形象出现，然后我就哭的眼泪鼻涕都流下来。谁出现？师傅师傅的形象啊啊，就声音就是师傅的声音啊，但是我看不到师傅，因为我太小了，师傅太高大了，我就好不容易爬到师傅的脚趾甲上面。就拇指甲上面爬上去，啊那个、我说：“亲爱的师傅、那个，我看不到师傅的脸。”那个不是眼稿啊，眼稿更高啊。然后我说：“我看不到师傅脸怎么办？”师傅一下子就把我送到跟师傅到这里来，我就能看到师傅的脸。啊，啊到胸部来、啊、就看到了，看到师傅脸，但是就是佛那个寺庙里边的那个佛的形象，脸就是师傅的脸。嗯。那天也是很多喇嘛都在看了，我们看下山的时候，他们也看得到啊。他们也看得到。我们下山的时候，他们最那个顶级的喇嘛就是院长，他就在那个五层楼最里边中间那边嘛。下山之后，他们才找我们那些几个人。找谁？找你们？找我们，我们几个人是不是可能认识那个师兄啊 ？OK。啊，他们领着我们去的。嗯。然后。就我们走了之后，他们才一切那个享受完之后找我们，他们是干什么的？他怎么知道是你们造成？因为我们去念五句，又念七戒礼物，然后就出现那样的形象嘛。他们怎么知道你们念五句呢？他们是天眼都开的。啊，对对，了解了解。我们一念，他就光就出来嘛。然后有一届有神通，但对对对忘记忘记，他们那个院长都是这个是开的，啊、然后就找我们。嗯。就那时候是第二次的震撼。嗯，哇哦 ！But it's not only there. Over the years, they say something all the time to me alone, privately, and ask me what kind of a level is that? Because in one level there are many sceneries. It's like a landscape landmark, so that you can recognize where you are. Just like a disciple who happened to be in the Amitabha Buddha's land, then they came back home and look at the Amitabha Buddha Sutra. They compare and say, "Oh, I was in Amitabha Buddha's land. That's for sure. It's not an illusion because she also knew about that during the inner vision. But when she came out of it, there's some doubt that crept in as to where it was. Either they ask me, or if I'm not there, they go ask some sutra, you know, <laughs> or ask the Buddha to explain." Anyway, we know which one is illusion, which one is not, because the time of initiation, you were also taught. I taught you how to recognize the real master inside, or Maya who creates illusions, cheat you and deludes you. And you all know that. It's just some so-called disciples. They are not disciples. They are demons already, and they don't repent. They just come in, abuse my love, my kindness. And want to take my power to delude people for money, for fame, and for the chance to molest others who are faithful and innocent. Like they became nuns or monks with them, and then molest them. For example, like that. And you know that there are some testimonies from outsiders, even from nuns from outside my group, from Buddhist nuns, and they also blame me. Even I knew nothing about that until a few weeks ago. Oh my God! God knows it. Terrible, terrible. Oh, oh my God! Terrible. I feel so sorry for all these innocent people. But they know about me. If they know I am his master, why didn't they come to me instead? Because they could also apply. They just put their name down, and we know where they are. And then I can send my monks to them. They don't have to even come to me. We spend money for them. They don't have to spend money for me. Even for the airplane ticket, some can afford it. They come to see me if they want to buy their own choice. And before initiation, I already told the monks or nuns who are appointed for that area. For example, 
which one goes to Vietnam on what day and which one goes to Thailand on what day and which one goes to Mongolia on what day, which one goes to America or Europe, for example, etc., etc. We all know already. They give me the names of the persons who want to be initiated, and then I approve. Mostly I approve. Rarely Do. I reject. Maybe a couple. Up to now, all my life, just a couple. Normally I approve them all. And then they come on a certain day, and they give initiation for that group. It costs them nothing. If my monks even went to their house to stay temporarily, I pay for everything. For the lodging, the food, the petrol, and the airplane or whatever tickets. I never take anything from any disciples before, during, after <laughs> initiation, life or death, nothing. Since I was a kid, I never wanted to take money from anybody anyway. Yes. <laughs> Quên sanh tử, quên chính mình, tình quấn quyết trăm 